I've studied the nearshore zone, so that's from the low water line until say 10 meters water depth. I wanted to know what, when and where the seafloor uh, changes. The dynamic behavior of sandbars along a straight coast is well studied, but the behavior of sandbars along a curved coast, such as the sand motor, was unknown. Because the sand motor is very large and dynamic, monitoring is very challenging here. Uh, the Argus Tower records the sea surface, and in their images you can see how the waves propagate to the shore and where they break. From uh, this information, we can derive how deep it is and where the sandbars are located. The observed differences in sandbar behavior at both sides of the sand motor show that the design shape of a mega nourishment has an important effect on the morphology of the nearshore zone. I investigate the impact of the sand motor on waves and currents and therefore also on swimmer safety. I have found out that the tidal currents around the sand motor, which flow up and down the coastline, separate from the shoreline at the sand motor and therefore create very big circulating currents, or eddies as we call them. And this also locally generates offshore flowing currents uh, and in general makes the flow much less predictable, which is therefore relevant for swimmer safety. We can use these results in the design of uh, future mega nourishments. So in the design phase, uh, different possible designs can be evaluated based on the impact they will have on the waves and currents. And therefore also we can already think about uh, if and which swimmer safety measures are needed around it. Based on the data we are getting from the Argus camera mast, uh, we can have uh, hourly updates of the actual seabed topography at the sand motor. And that information can be used in operational current models that can support the lifeguards in planning their daily operations.